Hey guys, Luke here, and welcome back to episode 4 of my win one take on series for Rugby League Live 3. Now, last episode was an interesting one, our first loss, and we did end up losing a player. I wasn't anyone that important, but uh, if you're sort of wondering what this series is, I suggest you go back and take a look at the first three episodes before watching this, and then come back to this and you'll understand what's happening, because I'm not really going to go and explain what the whole series is. But uh, this first game taken on the Titans, as you can see, and they've got a lot of players that could be quite useful in uh, at, at least. At least the Orca Nines get us through some of these Orca Nines games. But I've also got an interesting game against Manly, which really, really gets interesting. A little bit of a twist in the game, and you'll be able to see that when it happens. But uh, we did start the game very, very strong. Sonny Bill scoring another try. He has a bit of a habit of scoring tries for us. And obviously, Hasim has a bit of a habit for kicking the goals for us. So um, I'm very happy with both those habits that the players have developed there. But Sam Burgess on the ball there. Yes, an offload to Sonny Bill. And Sonny Bill will reach out and score his second try of the game. Good stuff by Sonny Bill as a... Uh, Burgess and Williams end up linking up there. SBW, uh, not the biggest fan of him personally, but uh, he was on the fan hub and I thought he was a good download. And that's why he's in the side. And uh, in terms of players we've picked up, um, haven't picked up anybody outstanding. I mean, the best player being uh, Andrew McAuliffe, but um, for the Nines format, maybe not the best. Uh, but Joel Edwards was someone we did pick up and he threw that pass to Sonny Bill. Now McAuliffe, another player we picked up, scored a try and I think he scored in nearly all the games. I don't think he scored against the Cowboys last game, but I think that was the only game he hasn't scored in since arriving on the scene, including his game for the Broncos as well, so which he scored a double. So yeah, scoring tries seems to be in McAuliffe, um, McAuliffe's DNA. For the Orkham Nines in real life, obviously not a huge try scorer, but doing the job for us at this stage, and McInnes as well. Um, probably one of them, one of the two is playing the hearts. I think McInnes probably more than likely is the one playing uh, in the hearts at this stage. But yeah, 18-0 up at half time. Get the ball to Ken Nagus, and he's going to take on Hoffman or whoever it is at fullback there. Now, it's just a, a foot race here, and Ken Nagus is quite old. I think he's in his 40s, and he's a trainer for the Raiders now, I believe. Uh, but he did have enough, enough in the legs to just sort of outpace Hoffman there. Now, I'm certain that had I been controlling Hoffman there, we would have made that tackle, but instead they decided to uh, run next to us a little bit, and if you noticed, it gets to a sort of a point where maybe they sort of just give up for a second, and they stop sprinting, and that was enough to see us get to the line there. So 22 nil, and we're looking pretty good for a bonus point. Even better here is that uh, Andrew Muller's going to grab the ball, go for the bonus try, and there we have it. It will be 29 uh, nil once we keep the goal, has him from right in front, not going to miss. But uh, it does show um those uh, conversions can come in quite handy. So obviously we kick four from five, and uh, there's been a few times where we've been a few points short. Hopefully this isn't one of them, but unfortunately it was, and uh, we end up falling just short of that um, that bonus play. So 29 points yet again there, but we're getting closer and closer each game. Now this is probably the biggest blowout when we've had. I mean there was no points conceded, so you know that that's a, a great indication of um, where we're going on this. And the more games I'm playing with the side, and you know of the Orca Nines, you know in a row and that sort of stuff, the better we're going to get. But the pickup we do get from the Titans with someone who I'm very, very happy with. Now, we've got Falau who does play fullback on this game. Well, he's listed as a fullback and play center, obviously. You know, he played that pretty much all his career center or wing uh, in the NRL, I'd say. But Hoffman, he's a very versatile player for the back line. He can play every position in the back line, really. Fullback, center, wing, 5A, halfback, whatever. Now, finding a spot for him in this side, going to be no problem. It's just a matter of do I want to play him in the halves? Do I want to play him in the backs? Not really sure, but... I'm really tempted to use him in the halves, get him involved way more than out in the wings, um, especially in the side that we've got at the moment, which you know isn't the strongest um, in terms of positions everywhere. But the backs are some a position that I think we can sort of cover a little bit. But we are going to start the game really, really well here. Um, mainly sort of coasted their first their first um, hit up of the game, and then Sunny Bill ends up with a ball from a really, really poor. Um, offload, which I find in this game, it does happen quite a lot in these Auckland Lion game. Uh, both career made with the Tigers and that sort of stuff, and you know, in this, in uh, this one, they sort of just force the play. I'm not really sure what's to go there, but yeah, it definitely happens. Now Israel Folau just hit a gap there, and that was really a nice little fullback try out the back, and I thought that one looked really, really nice. And Sonny Bill ends up scoring his second try of the game. First one, obviously a bonus point, but um, yeah, this time ends up scoring just a normal try. Um, and I think I did figure out the positions here. I, I believe three and four, like where I'm playing the second rowers, if they're like sort of centers, um, you know, wide runners and that sort of stuff. So I'm pretty happy with Sonny Bill camped out in the centers there. And then there's like one position, which is prop, which is like eight, I think. Um, five and two are the wingers. I believe some of the numbers are pretty much similar. Obviously, one's fullback. Um, nine is the hooker, I believe. 
and then seven and six are uh, the halves. So uh, it's not the default side you'll get. They'll put other people in places, but in terms of where, you know, you can see Hazam Masri is on his wing, Sonny Bill's inside him, just like I wanted. And you see Ken Nags will be in the other wing as well. Uh, I think it is, instead of, you know, having Cameron McInnes stuck on the wing, which is very, very annoying. Found the halves on the wing all the time, so glad to get that sorted. Uh, but Hazel Masri ended up scoring a try, and that was a, a bonus try. So we take the lead to 23 0, now 25 0 as he kicks the goal. And he's 3 from 4 this game, so only one goal missed. His goal kicking is, you know, been pretty good, pretty spot on, apart from, you know, every now and again we miss a goal, maybe one per one per game by the looks of things. But Josh Hoffman, first game for us, got an uh, intercept there, and then Sam Burgess realizes that um, they were short on that side, and the little short side you know, scoot from dummy half, whatever, the dive over, it works nearly every time this all nine. so if you're looking for quick points, that's um, definitely one that you want to go with, so uh, 31 points, and we've already got our bonus points at this stage, maybe we could have taken the round um, for that try there, but Hoffman, I didn't want to risk anything, because I have done in the past, try to take it around, they just grab you, and you no know, chance of um, getting the ball down for some reason, I find it very, very difficult once they, you know, get you like that, um, I mean, rugby life 2 wasn't a problem, but um, in this one it is. So 37 nil. We are really pushing for three, uh, for three plays this game. As we see, McCullough and well, sorry, it was Hazem with the ball there. McCullough at dummy half as he should in the hooker position. Find Israel Folau doesn't quite get a bonus try. I was going for the bonus try. Don't get me wrong. I was really going for that bonus try, but the dive just sort of dove too far to the left there. But uh, we couldn't really go any further because they had a cover defender coming there, and I didn't want to risk dropping the ball as we have done in the past. But 43 points, I'll take that. And uh, if we get a if we get a uh, another bonus try here, that'd be very, very interesting. One of the last plays of the game, you see 17th minute, obviously 18-minute games, and Hoffman cuts back inside there, and he's one of the best players in this game. I'll, I'll say that straight up right now. I know it's very early on, but I've played ahead, and Josh Hoffman, one of the better players on this game. Um, I'm very, very impressed with Josh Hoffman in this game. And you see here, has some Masri will kick the goal, and that brings us up to the 50 mark. And um, what a performance that is, 50 in Auckland Lions game, five minute halves. I'm very, very happy with that on legendary difficulty. So um, I'm not really sure if that's going to be a regular occurrence there, but uh, th those extra plays, we're going to get, I think it's four extra plays. Yes, we see here four extra players. Oh, sorry, not extra. We have three extra players, but four in total. And that's going to be 10, 7, 9, and 5. So Manly actually fielded an okay side. Uh, first player, Michael Cheekham. Uh, obviously, you're not someone who's played a lot of first grade, but I think we're going to find a use for him at this stage at least for now, uh, a huge pickup here, Kieran Foran, uh, our first genuine superstar in this, unfortunately his only roles are 5-8, I would have thought he would have had a few others, he's a bit of a jack of all trades when he first came in the grade, then we've got Fleti Mateo, um, obviously very, very skillful um, back rower, but can play a lock in 5-8, and um, you know, I'm pretty happy that he suits the Auckland Lions format, and then Peter Hiku, um, Really, really, really solid player. Not the fastest or anything, but he definitely has got a spot in this side, in my opinion. So here's us just adding them into into our side. But uh, yeah, that's going to be the final thing for the episode. Hopefully, you've enjoyed it. If you can leave a like, it would be very much appreciated. Subscribe to my channel. Uh, follow me on Twitter, at MrLukeOnYT. Facebook page in the description below. And if you leave a comment, I'll definitely read it and reply. And if it doesn't let me, it's just because it's YouTube and YouTube won't let me do it. So uh, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye!